So, Demis, are you trying to cause an intelligence explosion? <laughs> no, uh, not an uncontrolled one. Um, <laughs> I, look, I, I think we, it's an interesting first experiment. It's an amazing system, a great team that's working on that, where it's interesting now to start pairing other types of techniques, in this case, evolutionary programming techniques, with the latest foundation models, which are getting increasingly powerful. And I actually want to see, in our exploratory work, a lot more of these kind of combinatorial uh, systems and sort of pairing different approaches together. Uh, and you're right, that is one of the things, the self-improvement, someone discovering a kind of self-improvement loop uh, would be one way where things might accelerate further than they're even going today. Um, so, and, and we've seen it before with our own work, with things like Alpha Zero, you know, learning chess and Go and any two-player game from scratch uh, within, you know, less than 24 hours, um, starting from random with self-improving processes. So we know it's possible, but again, um, those are in quite limited game domains, which are very well described. So the real world is far messier and far more complex. So it remains to be seen if that type of um, approach can work in a more general way. So that's Demi Sasabi, founder of Google at DeepMind, talking about kind of the next evolution of AI. And we've been talking about this exact idea on this channel for quite a bit, but just very, very recently, not only was there a number of papers that seemingly kind of confirm that a lot of these ideas are closer, but also some announcements from Google DeepMind and OpenAI, et cetera, people at those companies saying that we might be getting very, very close to this kind of intersection of these two things happening. So this green line, that's AlphaGo Lee. So that was the version of AlphaGo, which beat the champion Lee Sedol in 2016. That model was trained on human data, on human games. So it learned to kind of replicate what we're doing and it got very, very good at it. It beat the human world champion. But then we have this blue line. So this is the AlphaGo Zero. AlphaGo Zero started with a blank slate and learned to play the game by playing itself. So self-play, self-improvement. Instead of learning from human data, it started from scratch. So humans didn't give it any hints about how to play the game, but also we didn't give it any baggage or our own kind of preconceived notions about how to play the game. And so this blue line is kind of over a number of training days. As you can see here, it very rapidly gets really good. Within 36 hours, it reaches and surpasses the level of AlphaGo. And by the 72 hour mark, it beats that previous model, AlphaGo Lee, 100 to zero. And then as a continuous playing, it becomes a sort of the best Go player in the world, human or AI. And we've seen variations on this in other papers. So this isn't just an isolated incident, but there's other examples of this. The idea that if we just let it sort of train itself, if we let it play itself and improve itself, oftentimes the results will be much, much better. A few weeks ago, I talked to the ex-Googlers of the SVIC podcast where we discussed this very idea, this was before Google DeepMind released Alpha Evolve. Take a listen. What I'm seeing is we saw massive progress with 2016 back then, like Alpha Go to Alpha Zero, that whole idea of self-evolution, self self-play. Mm -hmm. And then now we seem to be, right, so we, we had superhuman AI that was superhuman at narrow tasks. Mm -hmm. Then we got this LMs that's a little bit more general, right? It's not superhuman really, but it's generally quote unquote intelligence. It, it, it's able to, whatever you throw at, it'll attempt to do it. It'll be like, I'll try this. I'll try that. Sometimes mm -hmm. it'll do well. Sometimes it'll do great. And now I think we're those two sort of different AI uh, technology trees or whatever, they're kind of um, converging in that we're, 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 we're taking the stuff that we've learned from AlphaGo, AlphaZero, mm -hmm. and we're applying it to LLMs. And yep. this is where, and actually one of the people at OpenAI, they did a talk at the Sequoia Capital AI Summit recently saying that the next big wave is going to be how we had, um, you know, throwing compute at pre-training then, you know, so we have test time compute mm -hmm. or tr training well, time, train test time, train time, compute, test time, compute. The next big wave is RL compute. So throwing mm. tons of compute at those reinforcement learning environments. Um, and then NVIDIA is doing the same thing with their Isaac Jim training robots and simulation. But I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, if, if, they, if they're able to scale up reinforcement learning on these large language models to do coding where it teaches itself, which they're beginning to do that and it's showing promising things and they're able to scale that up, that mm -hmm. seems like at that point, I feel like we're going to see some in incredible progress really, really fast. Mm -hmm. um, or you we think find coding is the, is the big use case that will unlock a bunch of other things. 
Yeah, well, so I just uh, on my on my channel just covered a video. I forget where it's from. I think there's a few Chinese researchers and in collab with U.S. researchers. But what they did is they create exactly that. So they're like, how do we do? It's called absolute reasoner. So how do we train these AI models? You know, we get the base model. How do we train them to do coding without mm -hmm. any human data, with no supervised fine tuning, all RL? And uh, so what they did was they created two models, and one is the proposer and it proposes various mm -hmm. questions and problems, et cetera. And then they have the, um, the, the student or they call it the, the solver, I guess. And it, it solves all the problems. And, you know, I was looking at that paper. It looks really smart. They really captured something. How do you take, how do you have it self play? So you have mm -hmm. the teacher and the, yeah. So, and, and it seems like it has good results. So if they're able to take that, apply it to bigger models, scale up reinforcement learning, it seems like they might get these models to be able to be incredible coders because it seems to like that approach, it generalizes. It doesn't mm -hmm. just memorize how to do problem X or problem Y. It's sort of like, okay, so I've seen these problems here and I can now solve all of these problems I haven't seen before. So it generalizes to the unseen data. Mm -hmm. If that works within the next couple of years, I feel like we're going to see a, a pretty rapid takeoff in coding. And if we don't, maybe hmm. maybe there'll be a bit of a, I don't know, AI winter or something where it kind of just, <laughs> you know what I mean? So I don't yeah. know. <laughs> Happened before a couple of times. Yeah, yeah. Joe, go for it. Uh, so I think the, the Absolute Zero paper was gangbusters. And it's funny because it's a long line of these things, right? There's, I don't know when it was, like the 60s when Samuels built the, the checkers player that self-played until it could beat anyone in checkers. And then there was... Tesoro and, and the backgammon player that did the same thing. Then there was the deep blue team doing chess. And then we have AlphaGo doing go, cause that mm -hmm. was considered unsolvable because there's so it's such a large board, so many combinations of moves. And then silver and his team decide, you know, what if we didn't train it on any human data we make it only learn through self play and you get alpha zero and alpha zero moo and the same engine can play chess go. And Shogi, I think. Yeah. Um, that's crazy. And it, and it becomes superhuman in play at all three games, the same architecture, right? And then these absolute zero guys are like, as you described, we'll, we'll do this proposer and this solver, and we'll try and get more and more difficult coding challenges to be proposed. And then the solver will get better and better at solving more and more difficult problems. And then we'll just run another round of RL on those training examples. And now the proposer is smarter. And so he proposes even more difficult problems. And now we're just going to eat our own tail in a loop until this thing breaks out of a glass ceiling, you know, and flies around the city or some Willy Wonka shit. Right. Anyway, <laughs> my point is that, that algorithm and that self-reinforcing nature, that's gangbusters. And it's proven to be gangbusters before. The question I had, and probably you thought the same thing when you're looking at the papers, how will you apply this to real world problems? Like we understand how to do it in a game, you know, a two player game, total information on the board rules are really simple. I see how you built a self play and I can even probably design one myself if I had to, but how to do that on like math problems or reasoning in a legal case. I have no sense of how to set up a self play game there until I saw two things in that paper. One is that they figured out how to do it for code. Mm -hmm. Sort of makes sense because you can evaluate the code and you know, know for sure if it ran or not and gave the right answer or not. But also, as they got their system better and better at coding, it also became better at solving math problems. Right. And they weren't training it on math problems, only on coding. I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah. Just getting better at coding makes this thing better at math? I wonder if it's getting better at generic reasoning. And I don't know the answer yet. I don't think they got into it in the paper. But that's a... That's a $64 million question. So here's a talk at the Sequoia Capital AI Summit by somebody from OpenAI. And the point of this is that this is how the training used to be or how it is for O3, right? So the big white circle, that's the pre-training compute. And this little kind of a cherry on top of the cake, that's the RL compute. That's the reinforcement learning compute. So the question is, what happens if we're able to scale up this reinforcement learning? through some effective method of doing, for example, self-play, something similar to what AlphaGo Zero or AlphaZero was doing. 
Well, then scaling and reinforcement learning, the chart would kind of look like this. This thing will be reinforcement learning compute. As you can see, it dwarfs the pre-training compute, meaning we can take these models and focus a lot more of the energy of the hardware that we have towards doing that reinforcement learning. The reason I wanted to put this video together is because I'm trying to put together a playlist where we have all the videos that are kind of leading up to this because it's kind of important to understand what happened before to understand where this is heading. Because if we're able to kind of recreate, so what happened with, with this idea of zero human data instead of focusing on reinforcement learning, if we can recreate that with the large language models, we could see some pretty incredible results. Again, training on human data creates a model that beats us. Training without human data, letting it figure out on its own, it beats that other model 100 to zero. So what does that look like, for example, if we manage something like this, but for a coding model or for a math model? Again, it has to have some sort of an outcome that we're able to kind of evaluate, right? So just like a game, you can tell, okay, who wins, who loses. So it's something subjective like writing, that might be a little bit more difficult, but for coding, for math, for things like that, we do have specific outcomes that we want. And what's interesting is it does look like training for those things creates kind of a, a general improvement across different areas. With the absolute zero reasoner paper, for example, training them on doing self-play with coding also makes them better at math. So just teaching them this thing generalizes to other domains. So I'll put up a playlist somewhere here on the screen and down below in the description in the comments, check it out if you haven't seen it yet because it does kind of seem like we're beginning to approach this idea, the, the merging of the two tech trees together. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you next time.